I love the fabric. It's very drapey. I'll probably add some footage of me sort of holding it up and so you can see the drape of it. Um, it's just that I, that's something I need to compensate for when I make the next one is to just shorten the straps so I don't have this issue again. Before I blocked it, I was pretty comfortable with how low cut it was. But after I blocked it, it was just kind of like, no, nah, this is not going to be wearable. And I know the more I wear it and the weight of the garment sort of hangs, um, it's going to be more and more of an issue. So that's kind of, that's the only downfall, but not really because it can be fixed. So I'm finally getting around to shortening the straps on my Remy camisole. And yeah. Keep me company while I go through this ordeal. So right now what I'm doing is taking a look at the straps themselves and identifying based on when I tried it on earlier, where I wanted to shorten them. So in this case, I think I chose to shorten them three rows above that first increase. And what I'm doing at this point is just taking a stitch marker and marking the same spot on the front and back of each strap. Now I'm grabbing some knitting needles because I'll need them to pick up the stitches and yeah, as I unpick them. And I'm going to that first stitch marker I placed and cutting that stitch open. And now I need to just unpick all of the stitches across that row that I selected. Now, What's I think unique about this case is that because this camisole is knit top down, I cannot frog top down. So I've had to cut the stitch and unpick. And then the stitches I'll be picking up with the needles I pulled out are actually the bottoms of the stitches that I actually knit. I'm probably explaining that horribly, but essentially you have to frog in the opposite direction that you're knitting. And in this case, I needed to sort of work backwards because this was knit top down. So for example, if it was knit bottom up, I could undo the shoulder seam, frog down to the point where I wanted to shorten the straps. And it would be, I think, a relatively simple process. Um, but what I've had to do here is cut into it and unpick those stitches because I can't just pull out a thread. So as I said, I'm picking up those stitches on one needle so I can save them for later. And after this, I'm just going to repeat the same thing on the back portion of the strap and on the other strap as well. So once I have all those stitches on my needle, I quickly counted them and I counted 13 stitches. So even though my straps as I was knitting them were 14 stitches wide, because I am picking up the stitches from the bottom, what I'm really picking up is the loops between each, each of the stitches that I actually knit. So I am one short than the number of stitches I had when I was actually knitting the camisole but that's what I expected. And as I repeat this process for the rest of the straps, I'll know to count and make sure that I have 13 stitches. All right, so now both the front and back portion of this strap is on the needles. 
I am ready to do the three needle bind off. Um, before I get started on that, I need to make sure that I go ahead and flip that garment inside out because I want the side that's facing me as I complete the three needle bind off to be the wrong side of the garment so that that seam stays on the inside of the strap. This is a good opportunity for me to share that I actually hate the three needle bind off. I find it extremely tedious and fiddly and my hands just cannot get the motions down. So I just feel like a brand new knitter every time I attempt to do a three needle bind off. There are some strong opinions in the knitting community about the three needle bind off. Some people love it. I would say most people love it and would prefer it. If given the choice, I would rather mattress seam or kitchener instead of doing the three needle bind off. But in this particular case, it just made the most sense to do the three needle bind off. So I will include a little bit of footage of me fighting for my life trying to do this bind off. Um, but I will not let you suffer through this too much longer. So strap number one is officially complete with the exception of weaving the ends. So now I just wanted to lay it out here and show you a side-by-side -side comparison of the strap I shortened and the strap I have not yet shortened. So I would say it's a pretty significant change um, from the original, but yeah, so far so good. And of course, I need to repeat the same process on the second side. Um, and both straps are now complete. Super exciting. I just have to weave in these ends and do a final try on. So to remind us of where we started, here's a clip of me trying on this top just before shortening the straps to give you a visual of what I was working with and why this process was absolutely necessary if I ever wanted to wear this outside of my house. And here it is after. Total transformation in my opinion. I think the piece is so much more wearable and I'm glad I finally took the time to shorten these straps. If you liked this video and you want to see more like it because I have other projects that I need to do very similar alterations to, give this video a thumbs up, let me know you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!